Welcome everyone, Costine here on Serious Gaming with my Retribution Paladin gearing up guide for World of Warcraft The Burning Crusade Classic. I think this is one of the most underestimated classes for The Burning Crusade. A lot of people think it is a pretty bad DPS or that you only really take for support, if at all. To be honest, they're not necessarily wrong on that. The main reason people do take a Retribution Paladin in their raid is we want to have an extra blessing, we want to keep the judgments up, we want improved seal of crusader for the judgment for the 3% crit, we want someone that can guarantee we keep a judgment of wisdom and judgment of light up on the boss, and that's where a retribution paladin fits. That's one of the main reasons you bother with one, because we are no longer on retail, we're using two free holy paladins a raid, was desirable. Nowadays, you only really want one Holy Paladin, you want one Prop Paladin, and you want three Paladins in general, so that's where the Retribution Paladin fits. That's how a lot of people think. It's important to understand that Retribution Paladins do have a lot of potential if you put in the effort, if you play it well, if, say, you farm Dark Runes and you use them on cooldown during boss fights to help with your mana. If you know how to play, how much damage to take so you can get more mana, all that kind of stuff. A well-played Retribution Paladin, especially on the Horde side with Seal of Blood, can be top of the damage meters if he or she knows what the hell they're doing and if he or she actually puts in the effort to make it work. If Classic is any indication of anything, is that playing a melee is a very time-consuming process and a very expensive process. That doesn't change for the Burning Crusade, and it is part of the problem that they have. Not only do plenty of bosses, many mechanics screw them over, but actually playing optimally as a melee to be able to do good damage is something that requires far more effort than a ranged DPS or does gearing-wise, consumable-wise, all that. I mean, Hunters do have some... Have plenty of expensive stuff. Hunters also have a ridiculously overpowered set just from Dungeon Blues available, which you don't. Anyway, uh, that's one of the things to mention there. Another thing to mention is you will want blacksmithing. This is not really a discussion. No other weapon in the game until tier 6 is as good as the blacksmithing weapons. Well, there is one, actually two, that can compare with the blacksmithing weapons, but to be quite frank, you can use the blacksmithing weapons all the way until the end of tier six and you wouldn't suffer too much for that, or until deep in tier six and you can do quite a bit of damage. It is crucial to have blacksmithing. It is also expensive uh, to have blacksmithing and to make the weapons ridiculously, so you're talking about spending thousands of gold for it. Now, which weapon should you go for? Well, the main choice for a lot of people is going to be Deep Thunder. The logic here is that if you're an Alliance Paladin, Red Paladin in particular, uh, a slower weapon like Deep Thunder with a high top-end damage is very beneficial. Now, it's not really the top-end damage, though obviously that is important also for Crusader Strike and Seal of Blood even as Horde. It is important to have a weapon with high uh, damage, very important, probably the most important thing, but on top of that, a slower weapon helps you proc Seal of Command more, makes him more effective. So that's why you would want Deep Thunder, or why most Paladins would want Deep Thunder, Retribution Paladins. But let's be frank about it, most Retribution Paladins that are, m many Retribution Paladins that are going Deep Thunder aren't just going purely for the fact, oh, it's a great weapon for PV, they're doing it also for PvP reasons, which makes sense since a lot of the PvP gear is actually pretty good. Not as good as dedicated raiding gear, but pretty close. You can play with arena set, you can get arena weapons later down the line and use those, and they can be pretty good to use. But just understand that a lot of people are doing it, hey, I wanna PvP and I wanna stun people in arena, that's the reason they go Deep Thunder. Uh, personally, as someone who plays a Blood Elf, what I'd go for, and I've had this discussion with several people, uh, a, a weapon that I personally like is Lionheart. Lionheart isn't as slow, so it's not as good for Alliance, but for Horde with Seal of Blood, you just have a different way of approaching things. So the faction's specific seals do have an impact on your gearing, specifically on your weapon choices. And this goes, by the way, uh, this also applies to Protection Paladins, who 
uh, do get affected by Seal of Vengeance or not having it. But anyway, for Horde, you can go with Lionheart. And I personally quite like it as a weapon. I'd personally go for it if I was playing a Retribution Paladin. But that's a personal choice. I think you'd be fine and you can do a lot of damage as Horde. Regardless of what you're using, Deep Thunder or Lionheart, you'd be able to do solid damage. Outside of that, what do you want to focus on in terms of your stats? Well, first off, you want to get your hit cap. Now, the hit cap is 9%. But you can get away potentially with having as little as 3%. The reason here is that you get 3% from precision, which stacks obviously with the hit from your gear. And then you get improved fairy fire from a balanced druid or a scuffed resto druid going specking that deep in balance to provide to your raid. This would only really apply in 25 man raiding situation to be quite honest. But in a 25 mana rating situation, you could potentially escape with just only having 3% hit. Now, this is not something I would recommend, uh, to be quite honest about it. And the reason behind that is you don't want to rely on having both a talent and a boomkin. You can go with one or the, e or, or the other, but not both, not having both necessarily. So my recommendation in general is you probably want to go for 6% hit and use precision or use a boomkin. If you have a boomkin in a 25 man rating situation, and that's what you're rating primarily, you can then go for improved lay on hands. Drop precision, yes, I know it affects spell hit and that does have an impact on retribution paladins, but improved lay on hand is a useful utility. Keep in mind, a lot of people, the primary reason people are going to bring you into a raid, regardless of how dam your damage is, is for you a utility purpose. Improving that while not really losing on the, the damage side of things all that much, if at all, really, it's so minuscule, uh, minuscule that 3% spell hit that you lose on top of the melee hit, uh, that it really doesn't matter, and you can help out your raid a lot by keeping the tanks up in situations where they need it, especially in tier 5 and tier 6, and also Sunwell Plateau, of course. After that, you will want to get as much expertise as possible. The cap, I believe, is 6.5% for dodge, so you want to reduce the chance of dodging, uh, of, of your attacks being dodged by 6.5%, so you no longer have to deal with that. Now, that's fairly difficult to achieve you are unlikely to do it even with uh, even with really good gear because the sacrifice you have to make for that and the pieces you need are very difficult to, to obtain you can get close but you probably aren't going to reach the expertise cap or most people won't, wouldn't be able to reach the expertise cap maybe with sunwell plateau gear maybe with the trinket from magister's terrace they could do it but that's very late on in the game cycle but expertise is very much worth getting, as much of it as you can, if you can stomach the sacrifices that you might have to make. Then crit. You do get a buff when you crit, so you want to keep that buff up as much as possible. For about 30% plus crit will be enough to ensure that. With a good amount of expertise, with hit cap, it should be enough. Now, at this point, you could go for a lot of more crit or go for attack power all that but really when it comes to when it comes to your stat focus after getting for uh, around 30 percent crit should be armor penetration followed by haste now, i think there is a point when uh where armor penetration becomes better than haste uh, i don't know the exact numbers but this is something for Tier 6, Zulaman, and Sunwell Plateau gear. It's not something you care about in pre-raid Tier 4 and Tier 5. So it's a discussion for, uh, for a separate video, if I ever get around to doing it. Uh, but suffice to say, you're probably going to want Armor Pen haste later on, and you're going to want to focus on that later on, but not initially. Initially, you want hit cap, you want expertise as much as possible, you want crit, and you want attack power or strength, really. Those... That's your focus as a Retribution Paladin. And that's where a lot of people mess up with their gearing. In fact, a lot of people mess up with playing a Retribution Paladin for a variety of reasons, but separate video for that. Suffice it to say, though, getting your gearing process done correctly 
and not following the best list that do exist right now because yeah they have good items but the way those items are ranked and the focus that exists on those items is not correct you want six percent hit you want 30 percent crit you want as much expertise as possible why is it so many best in slot lists don't factor that in well because they're made by people that don't know what they're doing quite frankly okay so ignoring my badly geared retribution paladin with a mismatch of pieces of tier 4 and tier 5 this is how your pre-raid best in slot can look like or close to it there are better pieces available but those pieces are so difficult to get that it isn't worth doing so because you will be doing karazhan by that point and you will get access to much better items that's not to say it's not worth getting better pieces, of course, uh, especially if you get unlucky uh, with the loot drops in Karazhan and Gruul's Lair and Mac uh, but it's not the biggest priority in the world to get some of them. Anyway, helmet-wise, starting with that, Overlord's Helm of Second Sight. When a server launches, when Burn Crusade Classic launches, it is unlikely that you will have any jewel crafter that can craft a metagem that you would want, because... Uh, Jewel crafting expensive, takes time to level up, and getting the meta gems, the me melee meta gem, is also difficult. And even if you do have it available, it might cost so much gold that it's not really worth bothering with it in pre raid gear. So, for helmet, the best option, as I see it, uh, or one of the easiest anyway, it's Overlord's uh, Helm of Second Sight. From Shadow Moon Valley Quest, I believe the Terran Gorfing Quest, 29 strength, 3 gem sockets, hit rating, crit strike rating, very, very useful. 34 attack power and 16 hit rating. The enchant is from Scenarian Expedition Revered. Get that as quickly as possible. You will want the hit rating initially just to be able to not have as much hit rating in other pieces of gear. You want to go with minimal hit rating, hit chance, no more than 6% on your retribution paladin uh, gloves iron blade gauntlets now these drop from blood furnace normal the first boss of blood furnace normal are there better are gauntlets available yes but they are considerably harder to acquire doom plate rage steel all that kind of stuff these are fairly easy to acquire just do blood furnace while leveling until you get them and then move on it might take quite a few runs try and avoid having too much competition for them warriors tanks all that kind of stuff because they'll want it uh, but get these quickly and then move on from blood furnace neck natasha's choker blades edge mountains um, with crit hit and attack power probably one of the best options pre-raid there are some better options there's a badge option of course but for someone who's just recently leveled up uh, the, this is by far and away one of the best options to go for. Belt, Rubium War Girdle, 41 strength, 18 crit rating from Architraz Normal, the first boss. You need to do Architraz to get it into Karazhan, so this is probably one of the best options to go for early on. It might require a couple of runs, but it's not too difficult to acquire health. You might want to do this, uh, you might want to do Architraz over and over again just for some of the items there. Um, until you get revered with the Shatar. And it's nice with the spell because it gets paired nicely enough with the leggings you want to get. The Shatraf leggings from the Architraz key quest. 35 strength, 25 agility, and 22 expertise. Very useful to get these because they're not only the best leggings pre-raid for you as a red paladin, they're the best leggings for tier 4 and even tier 5 as far as I see it. Because getting that much expertise rating on an item, even though you don't have gem slots, uh, even though you may not have as much strength or crit or agility as some other items have, that doesn't matter. That expertise rating is just that bloody good. Just that good. And you can very well use them until tier 6 and maybe, maybe even in tier 6 though that's a different discussion for another time but anyway very useful and for most of for most items you don't necessarily need to rush for enchants for this i'd recommend saving up to get the best leg enchant the expensive one because you'll be using these for quite a long time though early on you can go for the cheaper version if you so desire if you want to save up on gold because hey the weapon is going to cost you um quite a lot Shoulders, the Overmaster's uh, shoulders from a quest in Netherstorm, critical strike 16, hit rating of 8, so that's basically a gem's worth of hit rating and 30 strength. No gem sockets, but these are better than many other shoulders in the game that you can get pre-raid 
at least the, the ones that are available at the start. Rage Steel is the best choice to go for, but those not, might not be available. If they are available, you should go for them. They're not too expensive, they're not too difficult to get, but the Overmaster shoulders are a pretty solid option to go for pre-raid and, and replacing them in a raid environment. Yeah, I know, green items, but welcome to World of Warcraft Classic. Uh, Cloak, Akanite, Death Shroud, Best in Slot, Pre-Rate, uh, 15, Agility, Hit Rating of 17, 36, Attack Power. Best in Slot by far, really, for any melee uh, to use Akanite Crypts, Heroic Final Boss. As I've discussed in my guide, Akanite Crypts, Heroic might be one of the easiest Heroics to do in the Burning Crusade. You might want to get some decent gear before attempting it. So you might so you might get this last before you start raiding Karazhan, or even after you've raided Karazhan. But you do want to get it. Just keep in mind there's going to be some competition for this. Uh, Boots, Shatari, Roth, uh, Greaves. Now, I believe, if I recall, this is from Shadow Labyrinth. You do a quest in Shadow Labyrinth, you get these, these ones with 24 strength, 22 agility, and 2 gem sockets. The reason these are better than ones that might have hit on them or crit as a stat or anything like that is just because of the gem sockets and the raw stats. They're fairly solid, and I would recommend them over other options. There are some other options, crafted options, but as far as I see it, these are the most uh, sensical boots to go for. And easy enough, you do, you do need to do Shadow Labyrinth uh, for uh, for the Karazhan Attunement, so might as well get these boots and enchant them. You may not want to get 12 agility on them, you know, I'm just being ridiculous a bit here, because 12 agility on boots is actually ridiculously expensive. You can make do with 7 agility, though. Um, first ring, Shapeshifter, Signet, uh, Lower City, Exalted. 25 agility and 20 expertise, very damn good. You might be using this for pretty much the entire game or at least until tier six when you replace it with some other, when you have other considerations, but the expertise is very useful. And that's the focus here with this uh, gearing up guide. Uh, chest, the Blacken chest plate, 30 strength, 30 agility, and 25 hit rating. Are there other options? Yes. Are those options as easily available? No. My recommendation is to get this instead of the legs and go with the Shatraf leggings for the 22 expertise. The legs that you can get from the quest this gives you, I believe it's Showdown. Um, the legs they give you are also an alternative for expertise leggings if you so desire. So if you have the time, you could just skip getting this chest, just get both sets of leggings just to have some flexibility. But otherwise you can go for this, the blackened uh, chest plate. Uh, a lot of people do it the other way around. They get the chest from the quest where you can get the Shutraf uh, leggings, and they get the legs from uh, the quest that can give you the black and chest plate. That's what I've seen a lot of people do. My view is getting the black and chest plate and the Shatraf uh, uh, leggings is the best option. Second ring, Adal's Command. It's basically for stats, 29 strength, 16 agility. You can use a hit ring. There's many other rings you can use if you don't care about getting the Shatar Exalted. Hell, you could even use the Karazhan Reputation ring probably before getting Shatar Exalted. But overall, I'd say this is probably the best option you can go for uh, pre-raid. Anyway, trinkets, and this is going to be difficult because you're going to end up farming quite a bit for these, and you're going to have competition. The first one, Hourglass of the Unraveler, Black Morass, normal. Enjoy farming this. My recommendation, and I've said this before, my recommendation, get the prot set and basically screw over any anyone that wants to compete with you for this item, and basically res reserve it. Just do it, you know, screw it over anyone, get this, it's best in slot as a trinket pre-raid. Second trinket, Abacus of Violent Odds from Mechanar Normal. Increases attack power by 64 and, and usage effect increases haste rating by 264 10 seconds. An alternative from badges is the Bloodless Brooch, but there is some argument to be made that uh, having the Abacus is probably better in some situations than... Uh, than the Bloodlust Brooch, though you should farm the badge thread not too much. Um, bracers, Black Felsteel Bracers, 26 strength with 22 critical strike rating, 12 strength enchant. Now, when it comes to enchants, just to be very clear, boot enchants, fairly expensive, cloak enchant can, can be, not necessarily too much. Chest enchant, yeah, absolutely. Honestly, enchant-wise, you don't really have to prioritize anything. The only thing that you really want to prioritize are legs, shoulders, and helm. And those, you know, the helm is a reputation, 
the shoulder is a reputation, obviously, and the tomes or ar arcane tomes, or if you're older, uh, or if you're older, uh, something else. Uh, Scryers is easier, by the way, to get rep exalted reputation with, and although many melee may benefit from going with Alder, you don't really care too much about that. Just go with whatever it's, uh, is more convenient for you to level up. And then Libram, Libram of Avengement. This is a weird name, but basically gives you 50 free critical strike rating when you judge for five seconds. What's the cooldown of judgment? Well, it's a bit longer than that, so it you're not going to have it up 100% time, but the way some people have calculated this is that this is best in slot for pretty much the entire game. It is that good. There is an alternative from badges that works with Seal of Command, gives you attack power with, I believe, Judgment of Command, but honestly, this is probably the best option overall for people. And a weapon, yeah, blacksmithing weapon that you want to go for. And with all of this gear, just so people understand, with all of these gems and all of the, this gear that you get, uh, you will have the following stats. You will have 17% crit chance from the gear alone. I believe, like if I remove the gear that I have, go with a birthday suit, uh, I believe like, okay, just gonna remove that as well. Okay, so your default crit chance is six points. You might wanna actually go with a bit higher crit chance with this kind of gear, just to have closer to 30%. It's 30% that you want to go for. Uh, so you might want to get higher crit chance with this kind of, with uh, with this kind of gear. You might want to jump purely for crit. Uh, but does that matter in a pre-raid situation, especially when there's so many raid items available from Karazhan? Probably not as much. It's decent enough to get that kind of crit rating. Chance to hit 6% without consideration of talents, because I have that turned off here in WoW Equip. So no talent, 6% with precision from the Retribution Paladin tree, you will get 9%. Alternatively, though, you can go Lay on Hands. I screwed up my leveling build. I shouldn't have gone Aura Mastery. Just gone two points Lay on Hands uh, if you have a Boomkin in like a 25-man rating situation. But again, um, you, should have, you should have a decent amount of crit. Uh, you will have enough to be hit capped, and you will have fairly good stats overall then you might want to increase your crit uh, somewhat above this. For tier 4, you're going to look something like this. Justicar Helm, Shoulders, and Chest. Now, it's not going to be easy getting these tier pieces. You can go with Gladiator pieces, you can go with Doomplate as uh, you're working to get these items because there is going to be competition. Protection Paladins will want them, Shamans will want them, uh, outside of Enhancement Shamans. Plenty of people will want these, so it's not going to be exactly easy getting them. So if you can go for alternatives, you can do that. They're not strictly important. They just have fairly nice stats, strength, agility, intellect. Yes, that is useful. Hit rating uh, and crit on, on chest. So helmet, meta gem. At this point, you should be able to get the meta gem that increases your agility by 12 and 3% increased critical damage. That's useful. You will need to sacrifice some of your gems. It's not showing up properly because it's counting the gems I have on my equip gear, not the gems I have on uh, in WoW equip itself. But anyway, uh, you need two red, two yellow, and two blue. And I've also put a hit and agility gem in, in there, not just for the socket bonus, but also because you might need a bit of extra hit to get to the 6%. Gloves. Grips of Deftness. These drop from the Karazhan Trash. They're the only gloves in Tier 4 with expertise. Actually, they're the only items in Tier 4 with uh, expertise. Everyone will want these. Every melee will want to get their hands on these because they are best in slot for pretty much all of them. I mean, there's some argument to be made about warriors wanting the crit gl uh, gloves from Gruul, something like that, but... For you, getting that expertise is fairly strong. 15 expertise, 29 agility, 60 attack power. Belt, uh, Girdle of the Endless Pit from MacFarlane. Not strictly the most important item you can make do with some others, but best in slot, another hit in agility gem. So uh, these two, like this is, I believe, one of the ones you get. Uh, this is an epic gem you get from a heroic. This one is a regular gem. And then... A blue gem with 4 agility and 6 stamina, just to get that socket bonus, and also to have a blue gem. Neck Choker of the Vile Intent from Badges, 20 agility, 18 hit rating, 42 attack power, pretty useful. 
Cloak. This might cost you a pretty penny. If you don't want to spend the money, you can still use Akanai, uh, the Akanai Cloak. But Vengeance Wrap, you should be able to get this either in Tier 4, Tier 5, or maybe even Tier 6, depending on when it's available. 12 Agility Enchant, 4 Crit, 4 Strength Gem, 2 Hit Rating from the Socket Bonus, 25 Critical Strike Rating, and 52 Attack Power Bonus. Fairly strong item, pretty solid. Boots, Iron Striders of Urgency from Nightbane, 33 Strength, 20 Agility, 2, socket, uh, two Gem Sockets, and free strength socket bonus again gone for the orange gems it's still fairly reasonable uh, ring shapeshifter signet you keep using that second ring violet signet of the master of assassin now there are other rings that you can use in karazan but honestly they should be prioritized towards other people because they're going to benefit from them more you can use this you'll be fine using this you might get some of the other rings but honestly there they'll there will be fierce competition and for you personally getting these gloves is far more important than anything else. Uh, pants, since I forgot to mention this, you will keep using the Shatraf leggings from the quest uh, as best in slot, just because of that higher expertise that they have. Trinket-wise, you're going to keep using Hourglass, and if you can get it, though chances are you're highly unlikely to get it, so you're probably going to use blue trinkets for a very long time, but if you can get the Dragon Spine Trophy is the best in slot trinket for any melee and for also hunters, but it's ridiculously low drop chance make it, it makes it very difficult to get. And really, who are you going to give Dragon Spine Trophy if it takes weeks if not months to get a single one? Are you going to give it to the hunters? Are you going to give it to the Fury Warriors? Are you going to give it to the Rep Paladin? I mean, they all benefit hugely from it, but there's going to be a lot of discussion on this, but it is best in slot. It is worth getting so people understand this. Uh, bracers, Blade Spire Warbands from Hiking Mulgar, 20 strength, two, uh, two gem sockets, a blue gem there, so I put the purple gem for agility, six stamina, free uh, strength socket bonus, and with this blue gem also helps towards getting the meta. Weapon Lionheart Champion stays stay the same, or you can use the, the Thunder, and Libram stays the same as pre-raid uh, best in slot. Now, with this kind of gear, just so people have an idea of what I'm talking about here, with this kind of gear, scrolling down to actually see, without considering talents, 19% chance to crit, 6%, uh, 6.15 chance to hit, so with precision or with a boomkin, you will be over the hit cap, uh, you have a thousand attack power, and just to give you some understanding here, uh, here I have 1700 attack power over here. But keep in mind, this is not counting anything like talents. Like it, it doesn't work properly with talents or anything like 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 by default. If I remove all of the gear, you have what 460 attack power. So just just bear that bear that in mind. Uh, that th this add-on is not counting uh, your base attack power, your base stats in any way, shape, or form. So you'll have over 1,500 attack power. You'll have probably for over 30% crit in a raid environment, especially with Seal of the Crusader. And you'll be able to do quite a bit of damage with this particular gear set. Very strong, very useful, and really the way to go. The item that's going to be most difficult to get your hands on is really these gloves just because so many people want them but how many melee are you going to bring in a single charizan group probably not too many the boots can also be difficult to acquire so can the tier pieces like the gruel bracers not so hard the belt yeah there's going to be competition for that undeniably but you're not going to have that many plate users you might have an arms warrior or a fury warrior in yourself competing for this so this is the belt is not really a problem the boots can be just because nightbane is a nightmare when it comes to item to getting the items you want but really outside but i really dragon spine trophy is the hardest thing to get and i'd say probably the tier pieces as well and the gloves like in your guild let's say an average guild runs two maybe three karazans you want to try and spread people around so that the people that need these uh gloves can get them try and spread try and be fair, try and spread people around so that they have good chances of doing so. And finally, for Tier 5, some changes, some fairly significant ones. This is where we get into 
into the territory of ridiculously fierce competition for items. But these items, just like some items in Classic right now are incredibly powerful, uh, powerful for melee, it's the same thing in the Burning Crusade, and it really comes to a head in Tier 5. Helmet and chest are tier 5 ones, you can use tier 4, you can use gladiator. It is preferable to get 2 set tier 5, just because the 2 set bonus is useful, reduces the cost of your judgment, uh, judgments by 35, that is going to help you with your mana, and mana is a significant issue for a red paladin to deal with, so getting that uh, is, uh, is quite useful. Uh, gloves, these drop from Alar, gloves of the searing rip, very free agility, with the Strength Enchant, 18 Expertise, 66 Attack Power. If you have the Karazhan ones, you're probably not going to get these ones as a priority. You can use the Karazhan gloves, though these are obviously better um, for Expertise, and they're very useful. But competition, every melee will want these. Every single fucking one will want them, because they're pretty much business law for all of them. Uh, belt, same deal. Belt of 100 of 100 deaths from Lady Vosh. This is the item that you will be doing Vosh over and over again. Like, you're gonna do Alar for the gloves over and over again as a guild. You're gonna do Vosh over and over again as a guild to try and get this belt. Just purely for this fucking belt. 25 expertise rating, 74 attack power, 29 agility, 2 gem sockets. It's ridiculous. Uh, Neck, you're going to want to keep the one you already have. You can get some alternatives, but you honestly want the hit rating. Like, this gives you a good amount of hit rating, which you actually need at, the, at this point, since you're trading away as much as you can for other stats, crit, strength, expertise, all that kind of stuff. This is why, like, the meta, uh, the meta gem, or, sorry, the gem that I have on the Tier 5 Helm is a hit and agility gem. And I have a number of hit gems elsewhere in the gear, like all kinds of hit gems. It, it's not important to have a lot of hit, but it you at this point you might be gemming a bit to make up for any deficiencies in gear. Shoulders, Sh uh, yes, uh, shoulder pads of the strangers, uh, stranger from Hydros and Serpent Trine Cavern. Like, the belt is from Lady Vash, which is one of the hardest bosses in Tier 5. The gloves are from Alar, who, which is the third hardest boss in Tier 5. And the shoulders are from Hydros, which is probably the fourth hardest boss in Tier 5. You get the idea. But these items are so ridiculously powerful. I know this is a unicorn gear setup. Like, if you get this, you're set, you're a unicorn. You're, you're, most people will not get this. But the alternatives are not even worth talking about because they are considerably worse. Like the shoulders, 16 crit, uh, 10 expertise, 60 attack power with 33 agility. Ridiculously strong cloak. Vengeance wrap stays the same as with tier 4. Boots. Now this is some discussion. You don't strictly need these, but these are a fairly solid option. But you can use others as well. Cobra, uh, Lash, Boots, uh, 33 agility... 25 intellect, male boots, and 66 attack power. You might have some competition. The hunters probably might want these, actually. Uh, especially if we're talking about your survival hunter. But they're fairly solid for you to get as well. Ring, uh, shapeshifter signet. And if you can, though, fierce competition for this as well. Band of the Ranger General from Kael'thas. 20 critical strike, 18 hit rating, 56 attack power. Really good ring. Other alternatives exist, of course, but this is a very strong and powerful ring that anyone that can get their hands on any melee, any physical DPS should probably want. Uh, Trinket-wise, you're going to want, beyond the unicorn item of Dragon Spine Trophy, you're going to want to get Tsunami Talisman if you can. Many people don't actually like Tsunami, but it's actually fairly solid Trinket. 38 Critical Strike, 10 Hit Rating and gives you a chance when critting, and you will be critting a lot just to keep up your uh, your stacks, um, when critting gives you a chance to increase your attack power by 340 for 10 seconds. Pretty strong, fairly strong trinket to use. Um, you're probably going to want to keep the same bracers as you have before. There are some from Lurker if you're very unlucky with High King Mulgar, but I'd say they're 
probably on par if not slightly worse because they have one less gem slot, uh, socket and they only basically give you what five five extra strength versus these weapon wise twin blade of the phoenix now let me stress this out if you have an arms warrior in your guild or a warrior that wants to to go arms at one point you let him have this weapon the reason is warriors need a sword the arms warrior need a a sword to be very effective you don't you can play with axe you can play with a mace it doesn't fucking matter they need the sword you fucking don't and this by the way should apply for the rest game but if you can get the twin blade of the phoenix you should use it like if you're not screwing over an a warrior you should use it alternatively uh at this point you can use line of heart executioner for instance the enchant for the weapon should always be mongoose apparently like people have done calculations like oh what's better mongoose or executioner it's apparently slightly in favor of mongoose from what i've been able to tell and librum stays the same and that is the gearing up guide for the retribution paladin from pre-raid to tier 4 to tier 5 like tier 5 is unicorn level stuff uh, with the gloves the belt the shoulders all that kind of stuff and dragon spine trophy of course for tier 4 and tier 5 it's difficult but here's the thing here's why so many retribution paladin f uh, paladins fail at doing good damage because they don't even consider this kind of stuff because the guilds they're in don't even consider this kind of stuff if you're playing a retribution paladin you really want to go all in because if you go all in if you use proper consumables if you're playing properly if you're dedicated you might be able to make the argument that hey maybe i should get these items versus some other people i've seen retribution paladins i kid you not i've seen them on private servers being able to top the damage meter without having this kind of gear imagine if you have this kind of gear you can do a lot of damage now the caveat there is you're probably only going to be able to succeed at that if you're a blood elf so if you're alliance you're screwed uh, in a sense unless uh, blizzard gives a uh, lion seal of blood which honestly they should and hey give fourth seal of vengeance extra fret 100 percent uh 100 uh, fret per second potentially or if not more for uh for uh for horde compared to what they're normally dealing with but anyway point being if you're playing a rep paladin in fact if you're playing a melee in general unless you're a shaman in which case you're a privileged bastard but if you're playing most melee you're going to want to put the effort in because the difference between a melee that slacks and a melee that really puts the effort brings the consumables is immeasurable the difference between a hunter that slacks doesn't play properly it, and one that does is not quite as high there is a difference don't get me wrong there is a there can be a significant difference depending on the bosses but it doesn't compare to the situation between a good melee a dedicated melee one that gets you know stuff like vengeance rap and all that kind of stuff it doesn't compare at all Quasine here signing out don't forget to subscribe like and enable notifications and stay tuned for more. And if you do like my content, if you do find these guides useful, please consider supporting me via Patreon, PayPal, or YouTube channel membership.